All right, as a follow-up to my Windows 8 video a couple years ago, let's just dive into what's new in Windows 10, and if you're concerned about it, if you're scared of it, let's just hopefully get rid of some of those fears and just walk into the, the facts about what it represents and how to use it. So I'll try to keep this as brief as possible, but essentially it's all about the familiar stuff mixed with all the new cloud-based stuff that you know that the world runs on today. So. Ta-da, drum roll please. It's the start button. Great, the start menu's back. Hallelujah, everyone's wanted it and so now here it is. Microsoft's giving it back to us. Now look, we do have the live tiles as well, but don't worry about that. It's actually, I, th I think it's the best marriage of the old and new because we have what's familiar over here and if you don't believe me, just tap on all apps and look at this. You can scroll to your little heart's content. You can scroll, scroll, scroll to see all the apps and all the programs you have installed. And if even selecting one of the letters themselves, tap or click on it, and you can zoom out to go straight to, let's say, the S's. Uh, let's go straight to the different letters. You don't have to scroll for eternity and find all the programs and apps you need. But I think more importantly, the start screen actually makes a lot of sense here because you can resize this. You can say, all right. Oops, you don't want such a layout here. You can actually see more tiles at once by moving this over. You can fill up the whole screen with it if you want. But if, you, if you're not a fan, you can keep it however you like. And let's say you don't want the music app here, then fine. Right click, unpin from start. It's gone. Uh, you can still move these all around. Here, I'm going to move my Xbox apps over here. I'll put my settings up on the top. I'll, I'll, I'll throw calculator over here and I'll say, you know what, Hulu, I want to resize you. I'll right click and let's make Hulu bigger. And now Hulu takes up more space. I can customize this to my to my own little content here and then reorganize this, move stuff around. I can say, you know what, Twitter or Tweedium, I don't want you showing live tiles, so let's just turn live tile off and now it's just a static image. You can tailor this to be your personal start screen. That's kind of the point. Um, so it's a mixture of the start menu and the start screen. So a couple things I want to call out here. Obviously these are live tiles so they're updating all the time but these jump lists over here are super important. If, if you're used to this from you know Windows XP, Windows 7, your, your window, uh, jump lists are crazy important. So you, you tap on this jump list and without even diving into PowerPoint you can see all of the uh, PowerPoints you were just using. Same with Excel. You can go straight into all the Excel spreadsheets you're using and, and immediately open up one of them straight from that jump list and launch Excel that way. It's a really good way to access the documents you've been using recently. Okay, moving on. The familiar stuff. Oh, here comes Excel in the background, slowly but surely. Get out of here, spreadsheets. We don't want you right now. Um, the file explorer itself. There's nothing to be afraid of here. I mean, it's it's a very similar story. We are talking about, you know, we're talking about files and folders and opening them and copying and pasting them. And it's it's a very similar story that, that it has been in Windows 10. So, you know, you can create a new folder and name it, oh, wow, folder. I mean, the whole point is, look, you're copying and pasting. You're, you're using a computer as you have been in the past. You don't need to be afraid of Windows 10 in that way. If you're comfortable in Windows 7, you're going to be very comfortable in Windows 10. Select something, right click, delete, or use what's built up here in the ribbon, delete. It's copy and paste, all, all the same. Folders are still the same. And you can, of course, right click here and go to all your frequently used um, Explorer directories right around here. Okay, back to some of the new stuff here. So we're in our start screen and um, we're, we see all these new apps and one of the key ones is Microsoft Edge and um, this will be available if you're running one of the later builds, one of the current builds I'm on as you can see over here build 10162 but um, that's just a preview build, it's not final release yet so some neat things about Edge is that it's actually a browser that uh, makes sense now so let's say we are reading a news story about Greece and all of their wonderful financial problems. Um, we are, no offense to any Grecians watching, uh, we are, we're reading this article, I don't care about the video right now, so we're reading this article, just so you know, we do have read mode built in now. So you just tap this and we go straight to reading view and we can see it without all the annoying ads and clickbait on either side. We can just see just the, 
just the article. Now I know what you're saying, you know, a lot of other browsers have that and that's very true. So the difference with Edge is that we have this new markup view, this web note. So we just tap this and I can select a pen here and I can actually draw and highlight some stuff. So I could be like, hey, if I wanted to send this web, this web page to you, I could be like, hey, whoa, um, this is happening in Brussels. Wow, isn't that interesting? And I'm on a surface, so I can actually use the pen and give some more precise direction and be like, all right, this is in reverse, and be sure to look up the AMD stock price as you're doing this. Wow, isn't that neat? And I can select up here in the corner, I can go through a highlighter and be like, be sure to check out the economic reform proposals. It's such a big deal. Or I can actually just tap the comment bubble and be like, boop, financial ruin. Say it ain't so. Now, what's the point of this, of this ridiculousness I've just done? I can now send this as is to someone else. I can share this to someone else. I can, I can save this as a bookmark with my notes intact. So imagine if instead of this, you're doing some shopping. You're going to, uh, you're going to Best Buy, and you want to send someone information on, you know, a, a product you want. No, I'm not signing up today. Oh boy, gotta get me this, gotta get me this uh, thing. This new 4K TV. Boy, oh boy, can't can't wait to get this Vizio. 4K TV. Here it is, it's loaded. Create a web note. And boom. I want the 80 inch, of course. Yes, please. Um, obviously, this is not the right price, though, so I could be like, hey, okay, this is $5.99, but this is for the small one. So how much is the big one? Who knows? Maybe I could have clicked on it. Maybe I shouldn't be so lazy. And I can now send this to you and be like, hey, here's the one I want. I can send it my, I can highlight all I need to, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it actually is, I don't know why it's so fun. But you can highlight, mark up, and send your changes to someone else via email or whatever. And um, it's much easier than just sending a link and saying, hey, scroll down and look at this part of the web page, because now you can actually send the part and call out the changes you want to make. So it's pretty cool. Edge is actually um, uh, not too shabby. OK, um, Cortana. We can't talk about Windows 10 without talking about Cortana. So Cortana is built right in. You can click right down here. And I've asked her to call me Ding Dong because um, uh, she just uh, has a way of saying it that just, you know, warms the cockles of my heart. So the neat thing about Cortana is that she's synced to my um, Microsoft account so that since I've been using it on Windows Phone, I'm actually able just to scroll down and see all the news that I care about, all the topics that I follow, uh, tech stuff, Microsoft stuff, local bakeries, local eateries, whatever. So, you know, she's got all this stuff and this lives in her notebook where I tell her, it's so weird to say her, but you know what I mean, where I tell Cortana all the things I'm interested in and I can filter it down. You know, if, if you're interested in a news topic, if you really care about the world of knitting, I can say, okay, I can, let's add, let's add knitting. Let's add a topic. We're really interested in knitting to pick a very exciting topic. I don't really need to be notified of news stories, thanks. But then I can hit yes, add, and now when I go to my home screen, if there is, thanks, thanks anyway, Cortana, I'm not ding dong today. We can scroll down, and if there are any headlines in the world of knitting, I'll be the first to know about it. Isn't that fantastic? It doesn't look like there's anything today. But what everyone wants to do with Cortana, of course, is talk to her. And so you can do, you can even enable to do a Hey Cortana without even clicking on anything. And it'll, she'll just start listening. And you can do that by going into her notebook and clicking on settings and enable Hey Cortana. But I'm not using it because it's kind of buggy on this preview build. So I'm just going to say, speak casually like something like, Will I need a jacket tomorrow in Manhattan? Oh, it, it did Y instead of Will. Let's try it again. Will I need a jacket tomorrow in Manhattan? I don't think you'll need a jacket, ding dong. The forecast for tomorrow in Manhattan shows 
Mostly cloudy skies with a high of 83 and a low of 70. Nice. I mean, that's that's actually pretty impressive. I'm going to do something similar, you know. Do I need an umbrella tomorrow in San Diego? Oh, and she crashed because beta software is fun. Do I need an umbrella tomorrow in San Diego? You shouldn't have to bring one ding dong. <laughs> Here's the forecast for tomorrow in San Diego. Cool. Really nice. And we can, we can of course, do normal Siri, Google Now type searches like, who is the 23rd president of the United States? Benjamin Harrison. Easy. Great. Um, what's $35 in yen? 35 US dollars equals 4,279.84 Japanese yen. Great. Um, what do you think of Google? Impressive achievement. Still, I get everything I know from Bing. Oh, Cortana, you're so sassy. Um, so Cortana is really useful. And when talking about why it's useful on a PC and not just on a phone, we can do things like this. Show me Excel spreadsheets about budgets. And look at that. It's actually searching my actual computer for that kind of thing. Let's see if I can find something with the uh, results. Show me PowerPoint files I've used in the last month. There we go. Boom. PowerPoints I've used in the last month. How awesome is that? Like, this is amazing Star Trek type stuff where it's like, you just tell it, tell your computer, show me stuff I've been working on and it'll do it. Show me information, show me documents that contain the word, you know, um, finance. Show me, show me spreadsheets that contain marketing. All, whatever you want to do, you can now just t tell Cortana to search for you and you don't have to fill in those parameters manually. You can just do it yourself. It's really quite powerful and very, uh, useful for um, this kind of thing. So I encourage you to play around with Cortana. She's more than just a toy. Um, she's actually a very useful tool in Windows 10. Uh, another quick note, um, Continuum is very useful in Task View. So if you have a bunch of things open like the new Photos app, which you can resize and it, and it scales pretty beautifully and you can uh, edit your photos. So I have that open. Let's say I have uh, Skype ready to sign in. I have an edge window open. Um, I have file explorer open. So I have a bunch of windows open. Um, you can quickly enter task view right here. Just tap it and you see all of them open at once and you can cycle through them and click what you need. So, you know, pretty handy, um, genuinely handy. On certain devices, you have uh, quick finger gestures that let you see it all at once. Um, but this gets even better with Snap. So I want to view two things side by side. So I want to view my file explorer and my internet browser side by side. So I'm just going to drag this over to the right, all the way, all the way to the right until I see that box appear. I'm going to let go and it snaps it to the right. And perfectly on the left, it's giving me a suggestion of things to snap to the left. So I'm going to say, okay, great. That snapped to the right, file explorer, just click it and boom, immediately snap to the right. That is perfect. So I'm going to be able to snap things left and right exactly as I need them. And even beyond that, I can go up to the corner and snap something into the far corner. And then I can actually have four things open at once. So I can have that open up there. I can open up a file explorer here and maybe go to my desktop and say, OK, let's go ahead and snap this in the other corner. And now I have things open like that. Um, I can keep going. Let's see. Open. Heck, even like a Chrome window because I may have two different browsers open at once. So I'm opening up Chrome now, ever so, ever so slowly. Chrome is ultimately going to open, I promise. This demo will be fantastic. There we go. Chrome is open, goes in the bottom corner there, and then Windows 10 is saying, well, what about this final corner? Sure, let's just put my photos down there. So now I have four things going at once, and it's perfectly split up, and um, it's a great way to multitask. Let's just close out of those and go back here, push up to the top and now it's full screen. That's uh, part of task view and snap. And if you're in continuum, which means you could swipe in from the right and get to your action center, boom. I can close out all these actions or I can go to any one of these and clear out of my actions here, my notifications. I have quick access to uh, my action center. And if you don't have a touch screen, by the way, 
you can access that just by tapping right down here and clicking on your action center and I can enter if you're on a device that's touch you can enter tablet mode and I'll show you what that looks like so if I have a window open here a window open here and uh, if you are in a tablet or a convertible device that's touch you can just go ahead and enter tablet mode and everything instantly becomes full screen because it assumes you want to touch so if you swipe in from the left it again goes to this task view and you can cycle through all the things you have open like I have Outlook and Skype and um, uh, Edge and everything so very useful let's get out of tablet mode and go back to normal okay very cool um, I already taken up a lot of your time but I just want to give you a quick overview of some of the key features um, there's tons and tons more and there's uh, great apps in the new uh, Windows Store that you can try and download a lot of them are free games and all this kind of cool stuff new office app so there's the new Word Excel PowerPoint you just type that in you can add them for free and they look really groovy on Windows 10 in fact they look like this yeah 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 so great, you're able to go through and actually create a Word document or a PowerPoint and it looks beautiful for touch or keyboard and mouse use. And you can, again, do things like snap them side by side and multitask this way while you're browsing the web and doing a Word document. It's, it's really a neat way to work. So that's all I have. Be sure to, um, uh, I don't care, don't leave a comment. You don't have to like this. I'm just glad you watched. I hope it was good for you. It was good for me. All right, that's it. Ciao, Bunga.